Have you ever put together a family reunion or any party? If you have, you know very well that's a project. It's a project to integrate all the family members. It's a project to scope out what needs to be done and get everyone on the same page. And for that reason, I have written a story to train you on project management. That's right. Those of you who are new to the world of project management, you are going to learn everything about project management through this very engaging, almost ridiculous story about a family reunion. So stay tuned, listen in, hit the like and subscribe button so that you can revisit this video. I want to break project management down for you in a fun and exciting way. And I write this from the perspective of me, a family member, putting together a family reunion, bringing people together and all the drama that unfolds. We're going to study the five major things that we do in stages on projects. We initiate projects, we plan projects, and then we execute, we do. What do I mean by initiate? Authorization. Planning, deciding what needs to be done, how it needs to be done. Then the execution, really executing that thing and monitoring and controlling, checking to make sure that nothing goes off track. And lastly, you close the project. This is going to be demonstrated throughout this pretty ridiculous story. In addition to this, you also need to be aware of the areas of knowledge in project management. There's integration, weaving everything together, there's scope, scoping out what needs to be done, there's scheduling, planning the timeline, there's cost, costing, budgeting and all that, there's quality, fitness for use, conformance to requirements, customer satisfaction. Have you ever had family members who are always in the whining mode because the quality was not met? Well, maybe it's not whining, maybe it's feedback. We are going to hear about all of these circumstances. And then you have risk, you have communications, you have procurements, things that you need to buy for this family reunion. And then you have stakeholder engagement. Take a look at all the challenging family members. You have them, I have them, we all have them. Maybe we are them. Maybe we are that challenging family member to the project manager who is arranging everything for the family. Have you ever been with your family and everyone wants to go in one direction, but there's that one or two people who say, no, I want to go in the other direction. They just have to do everything differently. My goodness, well, I hope those people aren't watching me because I sure know I've got them in my family. But anyway, let's jump into the story and let's begin learning project management from this pretty unusual lens of a family reunion. And while you've got your eye on the ball, remember the five process groups, I prefer eating mangoes chilled, initiating, planning, executing, monitoring and controlling and closing, and then the 10 areas of knowledge, integration, scope, schedule, cost, quality, resources, communications, risk, procurement, and stakeholder. All right, so let's jump in and let's see what unfolds. The Family Reunion Project by your buddy, Phil. Chapter one, project charter and stakeholder identification. On one fine sunny afternoon, while relaxing in my garden, a brilliant idea sparked within me. It was the idea of hosting a family reunion, a grand event that would surpass any gathering my kin had ever experienced. Excitement coursed through my veins as I envisioned the joy and togetherness that awaited us. With determination, I embarked on the journey of bringing this extraordinary reunion to life. Eager to organize and structure the event effectively, I immediately set to work drafting the project charter with my granduncle acting as the sponsor. As the visionary behind this ambitious endeavor, I assumed the role of the project manager, ready to orchestrate every aspect of the reunion with finesse and precision. The project charter became my guiding document, a testament to the commitment I had towards creating an unforgettable experience for my family. Within the project charter, I sketched a vivid outline that encapsulated the scope of the reunion. It outlined the magnitude of the event, encompassing a multitude of activities and celebrations that would engage and delight every attendee. From the initial conceptualization to the meticulous execution, the charter served as a high-level compass directing me towards the ultimate goal of fostering love, unity, and cherished memories among my relatives. Moreover, the project charter roughly estimated the budget required to materialize this grand affair. It was a financial roadmap that ensured every detail was accounted for, from venue expenses to decorations, food, and entertainment. By meticulously outlining the estimated costs, I aimed to strike a balance between creating an awe-inspiring event and staying within a reasonable financial framework. As I went deeper into the project charter, I clearly defined my roles and responsibilities as the project manager. 
I embraced the challenge of overseeing the entire reunion, ensuring that no stone was left unturned. From curating the ambiance to coordinating logistics and managing the diverse needs of my family, I took on the responsibility of creating a seamless and captivating experience for everyone involved. However, a successful project relied not only on my dedication, but also on the active participation and engagement of various team members and stakeholders. Identifying these key individuals became a pivotal step in the planning process. Each stakeholder had a unique role to play, contributing their skills, opinions, and expertise towards the realization of this extraordinary family reunion. Among the stakeholders, Uncle Bob stood out as a cantankerous yet integral presence. Known for his propensity to voice his disapproval, he would challenge my decisions and test my patience. Nevertheless, I recognized the value of his honest and straightforward feedback, understanding that it would only strengthen the event by considering his perspective. Aunt Lucy, on the other hand, possessed an unwavering pursuit of perfection. Her discerning eye and meticulous attention to detail would prove invaluable in creating an ambiance that would enchant every guest. While her expectations might be high, her input and dedication would elevate the quality of the reunion to new heights. Cousin Jerry, a very voracious eater with an insatiable appetite, presented a delightful yet demanding challenge. His food cravings could deplete a pantry within minutes. Anticipating his hunger, I knew I had to curate a menu that would satisfy his voracious appetite and leave every guest with a gastronomic experience they would cherish. Cousin Amy, a notorious gluten-free advocate, imposed an additional layer of complexity. Her dietary restrictions compelled me to craft a menu that embraced her gluten-free preferences without compromising on taste and variety. Balancing her needs alongside the desires of other guests, would require a meticulous approach to ensure no one felt left out or limited in their choices. And then there was Benny, the cousin with an infectious snorting laughter that could brighten any gathering. His jovial and spirited nature brought life to every event, making him a cherished presence in our family. Benny's laughter became a constant reminder of the joy we sought to create, a driving force behind the reunion's entertainment and activities. In the process of stakeholder identification, I also acknowledged the significance of our neighbors. Their support and cooperation would prove crucial in accommodating the size and scale of this grand affair. From parking arrangements to noise management, their involvement would ensure that the reunion had a positive impact on the community while preserving the tranquility of our neighborhood. With the project charter in place and stakeholders identified, the stage was set for an extraordinary family reunion that would surpass our wildest dreams. Little did I know of the challenges, triumphs, and remarkable moments that awaited us on this incredible journey of love, unity, and the creation of cherished memories. Chapter 2. The Scope Management Plan and Requirements With the vision of the extraordinary family reunion firmly in place, it was time to commence the intricate process of scope management. I embarked on a journey to collect and document the vast array of requirements that would shape the event, ensuring that every individual's preferences and desires were meticulously accounted for. Recognizing the diverse tastes and preferences of my family, I initiated a comprehensive data collection process. It became a flurry of phone calls, emails, and text messages as I eagerly sought input from each family member. Their voices became the building blocks of the scope, shaping the event into a personalized experience that would resonate with every attendee. Through these communication channels, I reached out to each family member, engaging them in a conversation that went deep into their preferences. From the kind of food they preferred to the drinks that delighted their taste buds, I left no stone unturned in my quest to capture their desires. Each response was carefully recorded, forming the foundation of the scope management plan. For Cousin Amy, the notorious gluten-free advocate, her dietary requirement took center stage. I made sure to note her preference for a gluten-free steak, ensuring that her needs were not only met but exceeded. This attention to detail would create a culinary experience that would leave her feeling not just included but truly valued. Cousin Jerry, with his insatiable appetite, presented a unique challenge. I eagerly collected his favorite dishes, and among them, I discovered his fondness for mashed potatoes. However, to align with his dietary goals, I noted his preference for carbless mashed potatoes. This inclusion allowed me to cater to his voracious appetite while also respecting his desire for a healthier alternative. As the requirements poured in, 
the scope of the family reunion expanded, encompassing a wide range of preferences and requests. The requirements traceability matrix and scope statement transformed into a WBS that would serve as the compass guiding the execution of the event. With the scope documents in place, I could now proceed with confidence, knowing that every aspect of the family reunion had been carefully considered and accounted for. It was a testament to my commitment to delivering an unforgettable experience, where every family member could find joy, connection, and fulfillment. Little did I know that the scope management process was just the beginning, and that the true magic of the family reunion would lie in the execution, where these requirements would be transformed into a symphony of love, laughter, and cherished memories. The scope management plan had set the stage for a grand production, and the time had come to breathe life into the vision that had taken root in my heart. Chapter 3 the schedule management plan. With the scope of the family reunion established and the requirements diligently recorded, it was time to transform the vision into a well-structured and efficient schedule. I embarked on the task of defining the multitude of activities that would bring the event to life, ensuring that every step was carefully sequenced and accounted for. Drawing from the comprehensive scope documents, I identified a myriad of tasks that would be necessary to bring the family reunion to fruition. The process began by breaking down the overarching goals into smaller manageable activities. Each task was defined with clarity, ensuring that nothing was overlooked or left to chance. Sourcing ingredients became a crucial step as I aimed to provide a culinary experience that would leave a lasting impression on every palate. Cooking, a central pillar of any family gathering, was marked as a significant activity. It entailed selecting recipes, organizing a team of skilled cooks, and allocating time for preparation and cooking. Decorating the venue was another vital element that required careful planning. With the scope in mind, I conceptualized a design that would create an enchanting atmosphere, reflective of the grandeur of the occasion. From arranging floral displays to hanging twinkling lights, every decorative element was carefully positioned to evoke a sense of joy and celebration. Games and activities tailored to cater to the wide range of interests and ages within the family formed an integral part of the schedule. Sequencing these activities ensured a smooth flow throughout the event, with each engagement building upon the previous one. From organizing the scavenger hunt to preparing for the talent show and setting up the lively karaoke session, every moment was accounted for to maximize enjoyment and engagement. The project schedule also accounted for the aftermath of the reunion. While the event itself was a joyous affair, the cleanup and restoration of the venue were equally important. Throughout the schedule development process, I estimated the duration of each activity, factoring in the time required for setup, execution, and cleanup. This allowed me to create a realistic timeline, providing a clear path to the grand reunion. With the schedule management plan and project schedule in place, I had charted the course that would lead us towards the grand reunion. The stage was set, and the countdown to the family reunion had begun. Chapter 4, The Cost and Quality Management Plan As the planning for the family reunion continued, the time had come to tackle the critical aspects of cost management and ensuring top-notch quality. These twin pillars would shape the experience and ensure the satisfaction of even the most discerning aunts and uncles, guaranteeing a memorable and enjoyable event for all. The task of cost estimation was a mammoth undertaking, as every aspect of the reunion needed to be carefully considered. Procuring food ingredients, drinks, game items, decorations, and various other necessities quickly added up, necessitating meticulous calculation and budgeting. With great attention to detail, I embarked on a comprehensive analysis of the requirements outlined in the scope documents. Through thorough research and negotiation, I sought to optimize costs without compromising on the overall quality and experience. The budget determination process yielded a staggering figure, a whopping $50,000. The budget served as a financial roadmap, ensuring that all expenditures were accounted for and aligned with the available resources. While cost management was crucial, it was equally important to prioritize the quality of each aspect of the event. Aiming to exceed the expectations of even the fussiest aunts and uncles, I committed myself to sourcing and delivering top-notch products and services. The food and drinks served at the reunion held immense significance in ensuring quality. Attention to detail was paramount in selecting the finest ingredients, working with skilled cooks and emphasizing presentation, 
With the dietary preferences and restrictions of family members in mind, each dish was crafted with care, ensuring that taste, texture, and presentation were of the highest standard. By going the extra mile to procure high-quality ingredients and partnering with trusted vendors, I sought to create a culinary experience that would leave a lasting impression. The quality of the games and activities was another aspect that required careful consideration. From ensuring durable materials for game items to engaging professional entertainers, every effort was made to create an interactive and enjoyable experience. The aim was to captivate and entertain every attendee, fostering an atmosphere of joy and connection. From the choice of decorations to the cleanliness and comfort of the venue, no aspect was overlooked. By maintaining a focus on quality, I sought to create an environment where every family member felt valued, appreciated, and immersed in a truly exceptional experience. It was a delicate dance where resource optimization and attention to detail converged to create an event that exceeded expectations. As the grand reunion drew closer, the careful management of costs and unwavering commitment to quality paved the way for an extraordinary event where every moment would be a testament to the time, effort, and resources invested. The stage was set, the budget secured, and the assurance of top-notch quality would set the tone for a celebration that would be remembered for years to come. Chapter 5 the Resource and Communication Management Plan With the grand family reunion on the horizon, the realization hit me. I couldn't bring this extraordinary event to life alone. It was time to muster the necessary resources and establish efficient communication lines to ensure a seamless and unforgettable experience. The enormity of the task required careful consideration of the resources required to execute each aspect of the reunion flawlessly. I squarely faced the process of resource estimation, assessing the needs for catering, event planning, decoration, and even handling my jittery Rottweiler. It was a dramatic and fun journey to recruit the necessary team members who would play key roles in bringing the vision to life. First and foremost, the catering staff became essential in creating a culinary experience that would tantalize the taste buds of every family member. I recruited talented chefs, sous chefs, and service staff who would work together harmoniously to ensure that each dish was prepared with precision, presented flawlessly, and served with grace. Event planners joined the team to navigate the intricacies of logistics, ensuring that every element of the reunion from venue setup to guest management, ran smoothly. These resourceful individuals would orchestrate the flow of the event, transforming the space into a magical wonderland that would captivate and delight all who attended. Decorators played a pivotal role in creating an enchanting ambiance, utilizing their artistic talents to transform the venue into a feast for the senses. They would carefully place decorations, set up lighting arrangements, and add elegant touches that would elevate the entire experience. Their expertise would bring to life the vision that had been carefully crafted in the earlier stages of planning. But it wasn't just the human resources that needed attention. Recognizing the need to manage my jittery Rottweiler, I enlisted the services of a skilled dog trainer. This resource would work their magic, ensuring that my furry companion would be well-behaved and add to the overall enjoyment of the reunion. In the weeks leading up to the family reunion, there was a crucial flashback to a memorable training session for the servers. The focus? The unique challenge of serving the fussiest family member Aunt Lucy, as well as standing up to my own wild dog with a commanding alpha presence. Recognizing Aunt Lucy's discerning palate and her unwavering commitment to perfection, it was imperative that the servers were well prepared to cater to her specific needs. During the training session, the servers were equipped with extensive knowledge of Aunt Lucy's preferences, ensuring they could accommodate her every culinary requirement. They learned the intricacies of gluten-free cooking, the importance of cross-contamination prevention, and the art of presentation that would impress even the most fastidious of eaters. But the training didn't stop there. In anticipation of the presence of my own wild and intimidating dog, the servers also underwent a unique crash course in canine communication and assertiveness. They were taught the essentials of establishing themselves as the alpha presence, calmly asserting their authority and refusing to give in to any intimidation tactics employed by the furry troublemaker. Through role-playing exercises and hands-on training, the servers gained confidence in handling my wild dog's attempts to charm or intimidate them into parting with the delectable food. They learned how to maintain composure, 
firmly but kindly standing their ground and adhering to the protocols set in place to ensure the safety and order of the event. This special training session not only prepared the servers for the challenges they might face, but also highlighted the importance of adaptability and resourcefulness in catering to the diverse needs of family members. It was a testament to the dedication and commitment to ensuring a seamless and enjoyable experience for every attendee, regardless of their unique requirements or unexpected furry companions. Communication. As the team came together, communication emerged as a critical factor in ensuring coordination and alignment. Regular team meetings, both in person and through virtual channels, provided a platform for open dialogue, brainstorming and problem solving. Timely updates and progress reports kept the team motivated and allowed for quick adjustments when necessary. Clear lines of communication were established, allowing for efficient flow of information and addressing any concerns or challenges that arose. From the project manager to each team member, a sense of shared responsibility and accountability was fostered, ensuring that everyone understood the importance of their roles in bringing the reunion to life. With resources in place and communication flowing seamlessly, the stage was set for a dramatic and fun family reunion that would surpass all expectations. The excitement grew as each team member embraced their role, working in unison to create an experience that would leave a lasting impact on our family. As the final countdown began, the resource and communication management plan ensured that every member of the team felt supported, empowered, and inspired. Together, we were ready to make this family reunion a truly unforgettable event, where love, laughter, and cherished memories would intertwine in a symphony of joy. Well, well, well. You stay this long? I'm really impressed. I hope you've enjoyed this ridiculous story so far about project management through the lens of a family reunion. You've probably learned a few things along the way, so let me bring it full circle at the end of this part. You have five stages in your project. There could be overlap in these five stages. You initiate the project, that's authorization. You plan the project, they could overlap. When you're trying to get done with initiating, you could actually have started planning. Maybe your team members have actually done some pre-planning. You know, when you're trying to get a contract and they ask you to submit a proposal, you know, you have to do a little bit of planning before you submit that proposal. That planning counts. You could even say it's pre-planning. Then when the project has really been authorized, you plan out more, you flesh out the details more. And then you get into executing and through this story, you've been hearing about detailed planning, detailed execution, detailed monitoring and things like that. You got projects of different sizes. You don't have to use every single concept in project management. You got to tailor it. Maybe for your project, all you need is a list of things that need to be done and the time you're going to do them. Maybe on a different project, you need a Kanban board. A Kanban board is a board that has three columns of to do, doing, and done. You got post-it notes in the to do column and as you begin to do them, you move them into the doing column. But you don't move too many. You just do one at a time, especially if you're working solo. Now, if you've got a team of five, you could have five post-it notes of things going on at any point in time. That's okay. It really depends on the project. And then you've got done. As you complete each one, you move it to done. So there are many ways you can manage the project. My question is, are you thinking about your next project having listened to part one? Because there's so much more you can learn from part two. And I'm going to be fleshing out the story a little bit more and showing you a little bit more meat on the project management bone, so to speak. So don't go. Let's jump in and let's continue our journey in this pretty interesting story. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe. The Family Reunion Project. Chapter 6, Risk Management and Procurement. As the family reunion drew near, it was time to address the potential risks that could threaten the success and harmony of the event. Among the various risks, the cantankerous neighbor emerged as a significant concern. The possibility of him calling the cops and disrupting the festivities loomed large. To tackle this risk, a comprehensive approach combining both qualitative and quantitative risk analysis was employed. Qualitative risk analysis allowed for a deep exploration of the potential impact and probability of each identified risk. It involved assessing the neighbor's previous behavior, considering his temperament, and analyzing the potential consequences of his interference. This analysis helped to paint a comprehensive picture of the risk and its potential impact on the family reunion. 
quantitative risk analysis followed, assigning numerical values to the identified risks based on their probability and potential impact. This data-driven approach allowed for a more precise evaluation of the overall risk landscape. In the end, a creative and unexpected solution emerged as the most effective risk mitigation strategy, inviting the cantankerous neighbor to the party. It was a classic case of turning a risk into an opportunity. Inviting the neighbor was not merely a strategic move. It embodied the spirit of the family reunion. It demonstrated a commitment to unity, inclusivity, and embracing even those who might pose challenges. Procurement. In addition to risk management, procurement played a vital role in ensuring the smooth execution of the reunion. The procurement process involved sourcing and acquiring the necessary goods and services to bring the event to life. From decorations to food ingredients, entertainment to equipment, every item required careful consideration and acquisition. Negotiations and contracts were established to secure the best possible prices and terms allowing for cost optimization without compromising on the overall experience. The procurement process also emphasized the importance of ethical sourcing, supporting local businesses, and promoting sustainability wherever possible. By aligning with responsible suppliers, we sought to create a positive impact, not only within the family, but also within the wider community. As the risk management and procurement plans fell into place, the stage was set for a fun and human family reunion. The countdown to the family reunion continued, and the anticipation grew as each element of the plan came together. The family, the decorations, the food, and the activities were all aligned to foster an atmosphere of joy, laughter, and love. Chapter 6. Risk Management and Procurement With the risks identified and a plan in place to mitigate them, the focus shifted to procurement planning. It was time to order everything needed to bring the family reunion to life, a process that promised drama, unexpected twists, and a few peculiarities. However, little did I know that this seemingly straightforward task would be riddled with surprises and bizarre occurrences. As I placed my orders, drama ensued. Frantically, I scoured the city, going from one store to another in search of alternatives. The clock ticked, and with each passing minute, the pressure mounted. It seemed as if the universe was testing my resolve to make this family reunion a success. The delivery from Amazon arrived, but instead of the requested decorations, a box filled with clown wigs and oversized sunglasses was delivered. Bewildered, I double-checked the order, only to find that somehow a mix-up had occurred. Local vendors came to the rescue, offering unique alternatives that added an unexpected twist to the event. Despite the hiccups and unconventional choices, the procurement process moved forward. The local stores replenished their stock, and I finally managed to secure the desired items. The family reunion would go on, albeit with a touch of unexpected whimsy and quirkiness. Through it all, the drama and unexpected twists injected an element of excitement and unpredictability into the planning process. Chapter 7, The Grand Execution and Monitoring The stage was set, the team was in place, and it was time to bring the vision to life. As the project manager, my focus shifted towards directing and managing the project work. The plan, carefully crafted and refined over the course of the planning phase, became the guiding beacon. I ensured that the team understood their roles and responsibilities, providing guidance and support whenever needed. Monitoring and control became paramount during the execution phase. The scope, as outlined in the project charter, served as the yardstick against which progress was measured. Any deviations were promptly addressed, ensuring that the event stayed within the defined scope and that any necessary adjustments were made to align with the original vision. The schedule, painstakingly developed during the planning phase, guided the execution timeline. I monitored progress, making sure that each activity was completed within the allocated timeframes. Adjustments were made whenever necessary to ensure that the event flowed smoothly and that guests were engaged and entertained at every stage. Cost control remained a constant focus as I closely monitored expenses and ensured that they aligned with the budget. Regular checks and balances were implemented to prevent any cost overruns or unexpected financial challenges. By staying vigilant and proactive, I safeguarded the financial stability of the project, maximizing the value achieved within the allocated resources. Resources were continuously monitored and managed, ensuring that they were effectively utilized throughout the event. The concerns and feedback of stakeholders were carefully monitored and addressed. Open lines of communication were maintained, 
allowing for timely and effective resolution of any issues that arose. By actively engaging with the stakeholders and ensuring their needs were met, I fostered a sense of satisfaction and unity, strengthening the bonds within the family. The family reunion became a vibrant tapestry of love, laughter, and cherished memories. It was a testament to the commitment, dedication, and unwavering pursuit of excellence that had brought the family together in such a magnificent way. As the family reunion drew to a close, a sense of fulfillment filled the air. The memories created, the bonds strengthened, and the laughter shared would forever be etched in the hearts of each family member. The execution and monitoring had delivered a remarkable event that exceeded all expectations, leaving a legacy of love and connection that would endure for years to come. Chapter 7 The Grand Execution and Monitoring As the meticulously planned family reunion unfolded, the day brought with it a series of unexpected and wild events, injecting an element of excitement and chaos into the festivities. Amidst the celebration, a wild bird and its mischievous buddies swooped down from the sky, eyeing the delicious food spread with great interest. In a daring move, they attempted to snatch away the culinary delights, causing a momentary commotion. The unexpected visit of these winged intruders sent shockwaves through the gathering, with laughter and shrieks echoing in the air. Undeterred by this unexpected challenge, a quick-thinking workaround was devised. While the wild bird incident provided an entertaining twist, Another surprise unfolded as a friendly police officer made an unexpected appearance at the reunion. It turned out that the captivating aromas emanating from the sumptuous food had caught the attention of the officer, piquing their curiosity. Far from a cause for alarm, this friendly encounter became an opportunity for connection and celebration. The wild events of the day continued to unfold, capturing the attention of the press. Amidst the whirlwind of unexpected occurrences, the execution and monitoring continued seamlessly. Through it all, the spirit of a togetherness prevailed. As the sun began to set on the event, a sense of accomplishment and joy filled the air. The day had been a whirlwind of surprises and triumphs, a testament to the power of love, laughter, and the magic of unexpected moments. Chapter 8 Monitoring and Controlling They also adeptly managed my wild dog's attempts to sway them, standing strong in their role and effectively maintaining order throughout the event. This flashback served as a reminder of the thoughtful preparation that went into accommodating the individual quirks and challenges that each family member, furry or not, brought to the reunion. It showcased the commitment to going above and beyond, ensuring that every aspect of the event, from the culinary experience to the canine interactions, was carefully orchestrated and executed with finesse. As the family reunion progressed, the memory of Jerry, the cousin known for his stupid but undeniably funny jokes, came to the forefront. His unique brand of humor brought bursts of laughter and joy to the gathering, filling the air with infectious merriment. Jerry's jokes, often towing the line between clever and absurd, had everyone in stitches. With impeccable timing and a delivery that only he could master, he had the remarkable ability to turn even the most mundane moments into uproarious occasions. Each punchline was met with an eruption of snorts and chuckles, his contagious laughter echoing through the venue. Amidst the sound of hearty laughter, Jerry's signature snorting became an integral part of the reunion soundtrack. It served as a quirky and endearing reminder of his unabashed enthusiasm and the genuine joy he brought to every gathering. The snorting became a trademark of his infectious laughter, acting as a cue for the rest of the family to join in the hilarity. From clever one-liners to absurd situational humor, Jerry's jokes lightened the atmosphere and created a sense of camaraderie among family members. Even the most serious moments were punctuated by his irreverent wit, breaking down barriers and fostering a spirit of unity and laughter. As the memories of Jerry's humor and snorting echoed through the reunion, it became evident that his presence was an invaluable asset. The family reunion, with its carefully planned elements and unexpected twists, was elevated by Jerry's lighthearted humor and infectious snorts. His jokes provided a respite from the stresses of everyday life, allowing everyone to let loose and revel in the delightfully silly moments that only family gatherings can bring. Through Jerry's contribution, the family reunion became a vibrant tapestry of love, laughter, and cherished memories. His jokes and snorts added a touch of whimsy and created a bond that would forever connect each family member to the joyous moments shared during this extraordinary event. Chapter 10, Stakeholder Needs. 
Cousin Amy, the notorious gluten-free advocate and self-proclaimed drama queen, was a force to be reckoned with when it came to her dietary preferences. As the family reunion approached, the tension mounted. The mere mention of gluten in relation to the event sent shivers down Amy's spine. Amy's dramatic nature amplified the situation, turning it into a theatrical production. She dramatically expressed her concerns to anyone who would listen, proclaiming that she would be the victim of insurmountable gastronomic suffering if her gluten-free needs were not met. Her dramatic proclamations caused a stir among the family, creating a sense of urgency to ensure her dietary requirements were accommodated. The planning committee worked tirelessly to devise a menu that would cater to Amy's gluten-free needs without compromising on taste or quality. Gluten-free alternatives were sourced, special preparations were made, and every precaution was taken to create an environment that would put Amy's mind at ease. But as the day of the reunion arrived, the drama surrounding cousin Amy's gluten-free demands reached its peak. She entered the venue with an air of anticipation, prepared to unleash her dramatic reactions upon the slightest transgression of her dietary needs. As the food was laid out on the tables, Amy's keen eyes scanned every dish with theatrical flair. She examined each item as if her life depended on it, ready to pounce on any potential violation. And true to form, the moment she spotted a dish that appeared to have gluten, she unleashed a melodramatic gasp, clutching her chest as if she had been gravely wounded. The room fell into a hushed silence as all eyes turned towards Amy, waiting to witness the culmination of her dramatic performance. In that moment, she dramatically proclaimed her refusal to partake in any meal that dared to challenge her gluten-free devotion. Yet little did Amy know that her gluten-free needs had been taken into careful consideration. The drama that had unfolded was merely a testament to the grand theater of Cousin Amy's personality. As the truth unraveled, a collective sigh of relief swept through the room. The family erupted into laughter, recognizing that Amy's dramatic flair had momentarily overshadowed the careful planning that had gone into meeting her gluten-free requirements. It became a light-hearted moment of amusement, a reminder of the colorful dynamics that make family gatherings so special. From that point forward, Cousin Amy's dramatic performances at family events became a cherished tradition. As the family reunion continued, the gluten-free drama gradually subsided, replaced by a sense of unity and celebration. Cousin Amy's reputation as a gluten-free advocate remained intact, albeit with a newfound appreciation for the theater of her personality. Chapter 11, The Stakeholder Approval Challenge. Uncle Bob, the cantankerous one with the knack for voicing his disapproval, always brought a unique energy to family gatherings. His grumpy demeanor and tendency to criticize everything around him made him a true character that the family had grown accustomed to over the years. As the family reunion approached, the anticipation of Uncle Bob's presence was met with a mixture of amusement and trepidation. His knack for finding faults and expressing his dissatisfaction with every aspect of the event had become somewhat of a tradition. It was as if his grumbles and complaints added a touch of spice to the family gatherings, creating a unique dynamic that no one could replicate. With Uncle Bob's disapproval in mind, the planning committee decided to take a light-hearted approach to handling his criticisms. As the reunion day dawned, Uncle Bob arrived, carrying his familiar scowl and a string of skeptical comments ready to be unleashed. Curiosity peaked, Uncle Bob couldn't resist the allure of the complaint box. He hesitated for a moment, his grumpy facade momentarily faltering as he contemplated his first complaint. With a smirk on his face, he dropped a slip of paper into the box, expressing his dissatisfaction with the choice of music playing in the background. As the day progressed, the family reunion unfolded with a delightful twist. Every time Uncle Bob voiced a complaint, his family members playfully referred him to the complaint box. The box became a centerpiece of laughter and jest, with family members eagerly gathering around to read aloud Uncle Bob's grievances and share in the amusement. As the hours passed, something magical began to happen. Uncle Bob's complaints became more playful and good-natured. His initial grumbles slowly transformed into humorous observations and gentle teasing, revealing a side of him that few had seen before. The event had not only provided an opportunity for joy and connection, but had also brought out a newfound sense of lightness in Uncle Bob. As the family bid their farewells, Uncle Bob's grumpy facade had all but vanished. The complaint box had worked its magic, transforming his disapproval into a shared experience that brought laughter and affection. Uncle Bob's voice, once a source of discord, had now become a cherished part of the family's collective memory, forever etched in the annals of their reunions. 
From that day forward, Uncle Bob's complaints became a cherished tradition at family gatherings. It was a testament to the power of humor and love in bridging gaps and finding common ground, even with the grumpiest of souls. And so, as future family reunions approached, the family eagerly awaited Uncle Bob's arrival, knowing that his cantankerous disposition would serve as a catalyst for laughter and connection. It was a reminder that, in the tapestry of family dynamics, even the quirkiest personalities had their place, enriching the fabric of their shared memories and creating stories to be cherished for generations to come. Wow, <laughs> you actually made it this far? Bravo, I am really impressed and excited. I am going to be giving you a few links to help you in your journey as you continue your studying. I would like you to check for some links below to courses that I've developed for you to take your project management to the next level. If you're trying to study for the PMP, go to tinyurl.com forward slash elite PMP. It'll take you to a Udemy course. I provide great training for the PMP. If you want to take the CAPM, which is an entry level exam for project managers, just go on down to tinyurl.com forward slash elite CAPM, all one word. And for more documents and freebies from the PMI, also take a look below. There's many more bits and pieces of content that I would like to share. But big wrap up. Project management has five groups of processes. Initiating, planning, executing, monitoring and controlling and closing. Initiating is the genesis, it's the authorization. Planning is where you get your hands and feet wet in planning what needs to be done. Executing is where you jump into the entire pool and you begin swimming, you begin executing. Monitoring and controlling is the lifeguard, looking out for you, making sure nothing goes crazy. I was swimming once when I was young and before I knew it, the lifeguard had jumped in because the lifeguard thought I was drowning. Some projects are drowning and there's no lifeguard looking. You, the project manager, you are the lifeguard and you need to jump in and save that project. Then there's closing. Closing out the project or phasing the project. Then you've got to remember the 10 areas of knowledge. I saw six chipmunks quietly roasting coffee, reading poetry stories. I'll say it again because it's a ridiculous mnemonic. I saw six chipmunks quietly roasting coffee, reading poetry stories. What does this mean? Integration, coordination of the project, scope, Scoping out what needs to be done like a telescope. You know, telescopes bring things closer. So scoping out the project brings the scope in view. You're able to see what needs to be done. Scheduling is a no-brainer. Cost, quality, resources is a no-brainer. It's human, equipment, material, supplies, facilities, communications. What needs to be communicated? Why and when? Risk, looking out for uncertainty. Simple example, you're driving down the freeway and some crazy person cuts you off. Well, thank goodness they didn't collide with you. Are you going to pursue them? You're going to begin blinking at them with your lights? Or are you just going to say, well, thank goodness I escaped that? Well, if you don't do the sensible thing and you begin running after them, well, that is a risk because that person could be packing heat and you don't want to get into some crazy conflict, right? Or let's say you're driving down the freeway and you, you, get off the freeway and then you're on this dual carriage, right? And then you've got an opportunity to overtake a really slow person in front of you, but you can't see far enough ahead on the second lane. Are you going to take a risk and overtake really when you can't see what's coming? That's a risk. So you decide, I'm not going to do it. You just avoid it. You avoided the risk because you didn't do it. You cut off the idea of jumping in front of that person. So there's risk all around us. There's schedule all around us, right? Procurement is all about buying and selling. You heard the example of Amazon. That's procurement straight up. Procurement doesn't have to be a big old contract for services. It could be a one-off procurement, a one-off buy for something you need for a project. And lastly, we have stakeholders, stakeholder engagement. You got to engage your stakeholders. You got to understand your stakeholders. You will always have a stakeholder challenge, but what are you going to do? when the stakeholders challenge you. Are you gonna crumble? Are you gonna go mad? No, you can't afford to. You gotta keep your cool, be composed, show interpersonal skills, great team player skills. You know what research showed in PMI's research? 
it showed that the top two percent of project managers as voted by their colleagues and peers as being the top two percent, they demonstrated great interpersonal skills, leadership skills, things that involve people. So I hope this goes a long way to show you that in addition to all the processes of project management, there's also the underlying proficiency in leadership to be a really excellent project manager. If you want to learn and study more with me, look for links below or go on down to our website, praiseon.com. Just take a look and you'll be able to see the logo to remind you it's P-R-A-I-Z-I-O-N.com. Thank you very much. I'll see you soon. Bye for now. Don't forget to hit the like button.